yeah. burning on the Jake Feinberg show. Malachi, that was Malachi. How how did you learn? It's not about facility with you. It's obvious that that's already intact. But I mean, the, the feel. I mean, can you talk about from the earliest times the rhythm that you grew up with in your family? How you learned to feel the music? Okay. Um, I guess let's just start from the beginning. Yeah. Um, I started drumming when I was 18 months. 18 months old. Yeah. yeah. And my grandfather was a drummer. He put you on the trap set at 18 months. <laughs> I wish. Um, actually, I started out just like tapping on things, taking pencils and drumming on my like nursery books and things like that. Um, and I think it was great that not only was my grandfather, my grandfather was also a drummer, but my dad was a bass player because my grandfather taught all those children an instrument mm. and my dad chose bass. And when he noticed that I was drumming, he picked up his bass again because he hasn't played in a while. He picked up his bass again and he started playing with me, and that really gave me a sense of feel. And playing with my dad, it gave me a sense of security. Se yeah, security. And did it, did, you, did he play upright, or was he playing electric? No, he plays electric. So was, was he more of like, an, what kind of bag was he in? Was he in like an R&B groove funk bag, or is it more jazz? Or he was. Um, yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you a band. He was. He he played for Call Me Bad for a while. Right on. Um, played with Paula Abdul, and. He's, he's, I, I'm pretty sure I've played every type of music with him, including even country and things like that. I want you to talk to the peeps out there. First of all, this, this cat Malachi we're talking to from Orange, New Jersey, 13 years old, okay? Um, before we get back to the practical application of the, of the trap set, how did you learn to use the entire trap set? How did you learn to, the, the, how did you discover the fact that there's a lot more? Some cats get locked into using just one side or you know one thing. How did you learn to become so fluid and elastic? Well, I think it's sort of just in, instead. Since I've I've always been like a fast learner for the drums. So whenever I'm being whenever I'm being taught something, I'm thinking of how to use it but use it in different ways. And I've always been able to take what I've learned and not just have it, because like, if I learn a snare piece, I'll yeah. take the snare piece and I'll move it so that um, every right hand is played on this tom, every left hand is played here, every floor tom is played with a double, things like that. Um, and it really gave me a sense of moving, m moving around the kit a little bit more. Being could you could you demonstrate like uh, learning a learning a specific thing and then how you a apply it to the entire kit? Yeah. I mean, you're channeling Lenny White, who, by the way, you know, another Jersey cat. So go ahead. Um, a paradiddle, like. Explain how you stretched out to the entire kit from that paradiddle. Well, so from it's right, 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 left, left, so I take my right hand in. Do you have any, uh, have you just been a street scholar or, or have you had any academic formal formal training? I mean, I maintain that it's very oh, hard. The drums. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you just learn, you and your dad were just cooking the groove down in the basement together? For a while, that was what it is. Um, That's what it was. What, what it was, yeah, sorry. That's all right. Um, <laughs> and By the way, Malachi, what's your full name? People are asking what your full name is. Malachi Nasir Samdi. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, so for a while it was just me and my dad in like the basement chilling out and grooving and when i was about four i think he said all right we need to get him into a school for music because that's how he's really gonna learn um so he, there's a music school near my house mark murphy's music 
I've been there for about t 12, mo most of my life, that's all I know. Mark most Murphy. Yeah. Really? Um, and when I was four, he brought me there, and he brought me in, and the guy came and was like, oh, are you here to pick up one of your other sons? He was like, no, I'm here to uh, see if he wants to try out. I'll see if one of my sons wants to try out. Yeah. Uh, and he said, all right, is he waiting in the car? Because they only accepted 12-year-olds. And I was a four-year-old, just, just standing there like, ah, holding sticks. Um, so they said, um, we don't accept four-year-olds. And sort of kicked us out. Then the next day we came, dad brought a pad. And he told me to run in and just start playing. Um, and I... Just to get their attention, basically. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I was a kid, so really all I knew was like double strokes, single strokes, paradiddles. But for a four-year-old, doing a paradiddle is something that you wouldn't expect. And they let me in at four years old to a 12-year-old school. It was great. Malachi, did, did you, uh, how do you take in music? I mean, in terms of, are you, do you listen to a lot of old records? A lot, I mean, how have you developed your own individual voice on the, on the kit? Because in today's modern musical landscape, sometimes I have a hard time telling who's playing. And I know that you, everyone is searching for their own individual sound. And I just want you to take us on your trip because it's, it's kind of just beginning, actually. Um, for me, recently, like what they, what they do recently is they use a drum machine. Yeah. And the way that you, when you're listening to it, and you can sort of feel the fact that it's a, um, a drum machine because it doesn't have a heart. Like, it's a, it doesn't have a heart. You can feel that it doesn't have, that it's, that it's a computer. Yeah, right. Because there's certain things that an actual human being will do because they react, they feel, they put emotion into it. Was it was a call and response. Call and response. I dig. Yeah. Um, and I guess listening to drum machines gave me a little bit of um, holding down the beat. That was that. Um, but listening to old thing, old records like um, <sighs> Billy Joe Joe. Philly Joe Jones. Philly Joe Jones. Oh my God, I can't speak today. Um, dude, Philly Joe is the man. Dude. Yeah, you know. And um, you try to, to play. Yeah, I mean, can you can you play, play play a little bit of just 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 burn a little bit for the for the audience, dude. How about um, yeah. blend 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 jazz R and B and rock together. Uh, 
do you feel like this is happening uh, at very fast, this, this retreat? Uh, do you feel like you'll be able to comprehend it when you look back in 10 years and you've already been well into your career? Uh, how did you even find Billy originally? Oh, okay. Well, um, for finding Mr. The Art of the Rhythm. Yeah, yeah, it was Billy Cobbins, you know, his retreat. So I'm just saying, yeah, um, how did you find him? Victor Wooten, the bass player, has a brother. His name is Roy Wooten. Um, and I met him Interesting. a while ago, I think I was like eight, and we played together and it was great and he said, wow, you have a lot of potential, and he said, let me pass you on to some of my buddies, <laughs> one, of the, one of which was, it was Billy. Um, yeah, and um, he, he called, no, he called my dad and he sort of just um, had him tell him like what I can do, what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, and she sort of just like disappeared for a little bit and then called back and said, I want to have a Skype lesson. So for a long time, we've had a couple Skype lessons, just him teaching me rudimental, ah, rudimental things, things to just help me. Um, I, I've heard some people say this, the, for some people, the easy things are what makes the hard things sound better. Sure. And that's really what he's been teaching. Can you can you demonstrate an easy thing that he that he worked yeah. on that 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 makes the uh, harder things? Um, thing about uh, when someone says you get a lot of talent how hard is it what is the hardest thing about applying that talent when you know you have potential and then actually getting on the bandstand what's the hardest thing for you to in terms of applying that I think it's I mean how often do you get on the bandstand how often do you get a chance to be on the bandstand now well recently I've actually just been buckling down doing my academics so that I can is that because there's just not a lot of gigs? Not necessarily. I mean, are there gigs available for Malachi that you just don't take? Some, yeah, some. But I've just been trying to settle down, trying to get my education to a standard where I can still do like grade seventy-five <laughs> algebra, but still have my career. Yeah, that's right. I mean, what grade are you in? Eighth grade I'm or eighth, yeah, you're in eighth grade? Eighth. Eighth grade fluidity, unbelievable. So many great, so many great cats in the lexicon of rhythm. Um, can you just talk about um, what rhythm means to you and how it drives your consciousness, how it expands your consciousness? I don't think there's a single day that rhythm doesn't come into what I do. Even walking is rhythm. Walking, walking is rhythm. That's what the blackbird said, man. And there's no. There's really, there's no life without rhythm. Even a heartbeat's rhythm, a um, speaking is rhythm. And I don't think there would be really any, any color in the world if there was no rhythm. Hmm. What's the coolest thing you've learned on this, on this trip, this retreat? This retreat? The coolest thing I've learned is to not play the cool things, but play the things that make the cool things better. Yeah. My friend, continued success. Catch you around, man. <laughs>